Hello friends, this is Charlie Murphy here. Thank you for choosing my video. Today I'll be playing a session of 1-2 No Lemon on Ignition. Table 4, I'll open 6-5 tutored from the button to a recreational player in the small blind. Flop to flush, that's a nice flop on table 4 there. I'll go ahead and start betting out small. And then let's see here, against a... Table two, I open King Jack under the gun, big blind, three bets. That's okay to go ahead and fold that one. Table three, I'm on the button with Queen eight offsuit. So slightly used to open, but I do have a recreational player in the big blind, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Right on the cusp, probably a slightly losing open in an optimal environment, but short stack recreational player skill gap is going to make up any of that for me. Over gets the three, but I'll just go ahead and fold. Table two, I'm facing a uh, standard 2.5x open from the button. I'm in my big blind with 10 deuce suited. We'll go ahead and fold that. He's also been on the tight passive side for the first two orbits. Not that we're going to read too much into that through 10 hands, but... If it's already a fold anyway, and he's trending tight and passive, it becomes even more of a fold. Table one, I open fives under the gun, get essentially, you know, 2x three bet here by a button. I really don't fold very much against those small three bets, nor should you. However, this is weirder that I'm basically trying to hit a third five and I'm not getting great odds to do it. So I'll actually fold some of these, you know, hands that need deeper implied odds to function, even against that very small three bet. If we were deeper, of course, I would be coming along. Table two, we've got a recreational player limp, so I'll complete the small blind with ace four suited and check range on that seven six five flop. Uh, he min bets. I do have an open ender, the low end too. I've got backdoor flush draw, the ace over card. I think I can peel against that small bet there. You know, I can possibly try to stab the river if the turn checks through as a bluff. <laughs> if you're gonna keep betting, I'll just go ahead and fold my. My outs are not that strong and very obvious. It's going to be hard to realize off them out of position as well, even if they do come in. I think it's that flop min, but I think a call is pretty straightforward. Table one, get a 2.5x cutoff open. I'm on the button with ace king suitor. Go ahead and put in my standard three bet. Lost my wreck on table two, so I'll be shuffling out looking for greener pastures. We'll open king queen suitor from the cutoff, though, in the meantime. Table three, blind on blind, I'll open ace four. Table two, the small blind three bets me by king, queen, so that's going to be a very standard hand to continue with, especially against that slightly smaller open, but no question here, just call is going to be much better than four bet or fold. Table four, blind down blind against the limper, I'll check in with eight four. Table three, I'll open kings from the cutoff. Decent flop on table four with bottom pair and a gut shot on seven, six, four, rainbow. Uh, he goes and he bets a little less than half pot on 6-4-3 rainbow. I'm going to go ahead and float him with my two over cards and backdoor flush draw. Table 4, I'm going to go ahead and stab for the minimum there. I get 3 bet by the recreational player on table 3. can go ahead and put in a small 4 bet with kings in position. Table 4, I get check call. I'll go ahead and check back. Move my weak pair and gut shot towards showdown. Wreck jams on me. I call off with kings. Run into ace-king. 
He spikes, but that's the way the game goes. Now I'm drawing dead on that. <laughs> Make the full house, but the ace on the turn makes me drawing dead. I'll just show it on my four here, not try to fold him up a better pair. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check back my king-queen high. Look to hit a pair to value bet on the river or turn this hand into a bluff. Table three, going to go ahead and three bet jacks against the middle position, or the under the gun open from middle position. Checks twice. Gonna go ahead and bluff him. I think I like the all in size better here. Blind down blind table one. We'll find the 3x open with pocket jacks or jack 10. Facing the four bet with pocket jacks on table three, I'll call the four bet. Table four, we can go ahead and range bet small on the queen six six board, giving me top boat. Go ahead and stab on table one with my weak top pair against their top pair on that monotone board. I think I can go ahead and slow down with the pocket queens, give him a chance to stab. The jacks, I'd see here. I think I just want to float. I really don't need to jam much of anything. Uh, River is now the four flush. I think I just want to go ahead and give him a chance to hero call. I'm gonna, table one is easier. I'll just go ahead and stab for half pot on that monotone board with my top pair. I need to keep calling with the jacks here. Don't think there's any merit in raising earlier in that hand. This is not like I really have too much in the way of draws that wants to try to jam Ace King off. I think I should just be trapping with my strong hands or my short on value hands. We'll open 10 9 suited for middle position on table 4. Two recreational players call me in position. Out of position to multiple players, I'll be checking range. Great flop for me. Flop the flush on that monotone board. The big blind did come along as well, so we're four-handed. Give one of these guys a chance to stab. Probably check raise against the fish with the flush. Against a reg, I would probably play a little more balanced than mostly just keep the flushes in my uh in my check call range, not be raising too much in the flop. I do like the idea of trapping fish in this pot before they get a chance to get away from, from scary cards. 
Quick will go ahead and click the three fourths button and plan to jam the turn. I'm mean, surprised he folded after that big flop bet. Good. I think my play is good given these recreational players a chance to stack off early while I know I've got the best hand, or at least I'm quite comfortable my hand is very strong. I guess I don't know for a fact I have the best hand. Table one, got a 2.5x open from under the gun. I'll go ahead and 3-bet out of my big blind with ace-9 suited. Calling would also be fine, but I like 3-betting early and often. Table three, th uh, 3x open from under the gun. I'll 3-bet my button with ace-jack suited. Get four bet a pretty good size over here. I think I can still defend with some Broadway suited aces like ace queen, ace jack, ace ten. I would ship in pocket kings and ace king, trap with my aces, call with most other pocket pairs and some suited Broadway hands. Got a three X open from the cutoff. Over here on table four, small blind calls. I am in the big blind with pocket ace. Going to go ahead and put in my squeeze. Going to size a little bit down because this hand is so strong and these guys are short. Pull the ace jack to the continuation, but on six four four two tone, no real piece of it. Jam my pocket pairs that were good in my flush draws, including my trapped pocket aces. <laughs> Table one, open ace five from the button. Big blind calls and checks to me on king eight six rainbow. I'll go ahead and put in a small bet. Interesting turn card, the seven. Gives me the open end or the low end of it. I think I'll go ahead and check this back because the nine is not a great card to have the pot bloated. And even the four is going to be a pretty obvious uh, possible straight. So I think I want to keep this pot smaller. My equity do a little bit better in a smaller pot here. You know, if I triple barrel there and hit that nine, I'm not really loving life all that much. <laughs> now he goes and he bets a blocker type bet. I'm actually going to go ahead and try to value raise this guy here with the low end of the straight. It's because I think he's a reg, and I think regs block bet and don't really full. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a chance to consider me as being full of shit and pay off the low end here. Table four, going to open king nine from the button. Should he 3-bet, I'm just going to get the hell out of the way. I just don't think guys are doing that with bluffs. I just don't think the meta is there yet. Probably won't be for a while. <laughs> okay, before opening 10-8 eight, eight suited from the cutoff. It called in position, flop an open ender on King Jack 9 2 tone. I'm going to go ahead and start betting out small, try to fold out his low pairs or or just whipped, whipped on paired cards and keep barreling with my equity on tons of turns. That particular one I think I'll do better on a check because now it's a four straight board uh, and I do have a pair. So just go ahead and check that one now. Table three, got a 2.5x button open. I am in the small blind with ace king suited. So Going to go ahead and three bet. Comes along for a call. Get a queen 10 4 two tone board. Going to go ahead and start betting. Probably keep barreling here with my over cards and my gut shot. I'm just going to try to show down my 10 on this four straight board here on table four. I don't think the wreck's going to bluff me off too much. Probably not going to fold too many better hands by turning this into a bluff. I think just playing for the showdown is pretty reasonable here. And it works. Table 1 going to open jack 10 blind on blind. Table 3 going to open jack 4 suited from the button. Table 1 going to open ace 5 from the button. 
Table four, the recreational player calls. Got a king, ten, eight, two-tone board. I'm gonna go ahead and start betting small. I do have some backdoor equity I can pick up here on a card like the king of hearts. Uh, table one, gonna go ahead and put in a small bet on jack, three, two, rainbow. I do have an over card and a gut shot. I'm gonna open six to eight, six suited. I'm from the cutoff on table two. I'm gonna continue barreling. Use the half pot size on that board pairing card. Over there on King uh, 10, King King 10, 8, King double flush draw. Uh, the recreational player calls my small bet. I'm going to go ahead and check this back because he's short. If we were deeper against a reg type player, I could go ahead and continue barreling and look to triple off. Here, I think if I hit my card, I can still get a ton of value on the river. Uh, or I can reopen as a bluff if I would like. Um... I think I'll just take the showdown with Ace High, though. These guys, these wrecks show up with stuff that doesn't beat Ace High. It's a paired board, so the Ace High is relatively stronger than it usually is. I'm just going to go ahead and take the showdown. Lose to Ace 9. Probably not folding it on anyway, given that he turns second pair on the turn. Uh, table 3, open pocket 8 from the cutoff. Big blind calls. Got a King 3, deuce, rainbow board. Go ahead and bet small, mostly checking back turns, unless I peel that third 8. Table two, I'm facing a 2.5x open from the button. I am in the big blind with jack, queen, queen, jack. Going to go ahead and put in a three bet there. This one's kind of loose, kind of on the cusp, but I think it's okay. Calling, of course, is also fine. Table three, he check calls. Uh, turn is a nine. Go ahead and check back my pocket eights, which is now third pair. Table two, we can go ahead and put in a small bet on queen, five, four, rainbow, mostly checking turns with my weakish top pair. Table two, he calls the flop bet. Turn is a board pairing five, putting a backdoor flush drop. Let me go ahead and check this now. Any five X's ahead of me and most queen X's ahead of me. I think I'll take the showdowns with pocket eights. I mean, maybe he could hero call me with a hand like ace four. I think it's going to be okay to try to go ahead and get some value from this guy. I'm going to go ahead for it. A little thin, but thin is the way to go. I'm facing a pretty decent bet over there on the turn with that, with that queen jack hand. Table one, gonna isolate my pocket kings out of the small blind against that limper. Two players call. I'm going to go ahead and check out a position to both of them. Ace high board is lousy for the pocket kings. I'm just going to plan to bluff catch here with my top pair. Against a better queen, but that's the way the game goes. <laughs> I think with two wrecks out there, I'd just go ahead and fold my pocket kings on the ace high board. Table two, going to open ace five, blind on blind. What did these idiots have? They both had jack ten, one with the front door flush draw, one with the back door flush draw. They got over on me, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. 
Table one, recreational player limps the button. I'll check in my big blind to play him heads up with my 10-9 offsuit. Flop an open ender on ace, jack, eight, two tone. Flop checks through, turns the four of clubs, giving me the 10, uh, ten of clubs flush draw as well on that three, three club board. I'll go ahead and stab for half pot. Hit the straight on the river with the seven, so I'll go ahead and put in a value bet. No need to overbet there on that flush possible board. I want the weaker hands to pay me off instead of scaring off one pair or two pair type hands. Get a 2.5x open on the button on uh, table three. Going to go ahead and three bet my ace jack from the small blind. I get called down by jack six of diamonds over here. So yeah, an overbet would have probably scared him away. There was no flush possible on that board. Well, cool. yeah, that's not, that's saying much. If I've got the nut straight, I'm going to overbutt against a fish. Of course I am. <laughs> yeah, pretty obvious, but, you know, if that was not a not a three-club board, but a no flush possible, I would have been overbetting them. There's a couple recreational players here on this new table too, so we'll keep that in play. I think I lost my favorite rec over here on table three. I got smacked around over there. The jacks against kings and the kings less than ace king. Table one, gonna open queen jack from the cutoff. It's three bet to a small size. I'm calling tons against this, but like offsuit dominated Broadway cards are some of the first hands I look to fold. You know, my, you know, suited connectors, suited gappers, those are in there. Any pocket pair, easy call. I think I'm supposed to, I think I'm supposed to fold some of the offsuit stuff. I'm not really sure against those smaller bet sizes when I'm in position. It's closer. I guess, I guess I just, just don't know until I do some solver work to see for sure. The work I've done in the past indicates those are the first hands to drop out against three bets, though. The stuff, the stuff that has more playability post-flop is what Solver recommends you continue with. The only thing that makes that any kind of a question or decision is that really small bet size, going from 2.5 to 8 out of position. That's an in-position size three bet. You should probably be up more like 11 blinds or so in that spot. Which gives me, which would give me far less equity, you know, or, or far less, far worse odds to call, meaning I need a good bit more equity to continue. Versus an appropriately sized three bet. And just as I was leaving, a short stack shows up here, two seats to my right, so I think I'll just stick around and come back after this orbit. Get a chance to play with him, assuming he doesn't bust. Doesn't bust before I come back. Okay, before we're going to open ace nine from middle position. Recreational player calls me on the button. Very loose 70 45 wreck with some limps. Any 877 rainbow board. I'm just going to go ahead and put in a small bet here. Going to make him put his auto folds in the muck and set his equity to zero. 
which there should be quite a few. Table four will open King Queen from under the gun. Recreational players from Little Ear, the hijack and the cutoff both call. I'm planning to check range. Big Blind comes along as well. I've got two overs and an open ender on Jack 10 4 Rainbow. I will check. Probably check call if the Rex bet in position. Checks through. Turn is a four. Board pairing four. Not that bad a card. Shouldn't be that much 4x out there, and now pocket fours is a lot harder to have. I am going to go ahead and start stabbing for half pot here with my open ender and two over cards. Calling to follow through on the river either as a bluff if I brick out, or for value if I hit. I think I'm value betting any card. A nine, a nine and an ace for sure. A king and a queen. I don't see why not. Go ahead and three bet with pocket jacks on the small blind and table two against the button 2.5x open. Uh, I get called by the wreck in position. River is a brick three. I've got king high. I'm not giving up with that. I'll go ahead and follow through. Click the three fourths button. No need to overbet here against a wreck in position. Just try to get him to fold. Marginal weak pairs, any kind of ace high sort of stuff. Take away his ability to bluff. Now, he goes and raises me, so I'm just going to quickly fold right there, but I think my play is pretty reasonable. Could maybe hear some arguments for betting the flop, but I'm not sure that betting the flop is all that necessary forehanded out of position to two guys. <laughs> I have moved away from range checking in a lot of spots where I used to, but when I'm in that multi-way out of position to that many guys, I think it's going to be okay. We're back on table three. The wreck limps the button. The small blind comes along as well. I check in with 4-3. Got a wreck limping the button over here on table one as well. Let's go ahead and give him a tag with that button limp from the 23 blind stack. Table three, I'll just check range on that 985 limped pot. Table two, open jack nine from the cutoff. Table one, gonna check out a position to the wreck on the king, king four. Check fold my four high over there. Check fold my nine high on table one. Interesting raise size here. I typically am three betting out of my small blind here with ace nine. I think it gets a little bit dicier against that size, but. Still going to go ahead and do it. Table three, rec limps. I'm going to raise out of my blind with 10 9 suited. Table two, blind down blind. I'm going to defend for a call with king 9 suited and go to the flop. Table three, the rec limp calls. Going to king 7 4, two tone board. Going to go ahead and put in a small bet as a bluff. Guess I can barrel some, some turn cards like eights or jacks are the best ones. Queen's not so bad. Here, when my small bet gets raised, I'm just going to go ahead and fold. Table 2, I get bet into small by the small blind on the queen 10 4 2 tone board. I've got the gut shot to the second nut straight, as well as the backdoor flush on an overcard. Very easy. Continue. Table 1, wreck limps under the gun. I'll isolate from the cutoff with king 9. Table 4, I'm going to open queen 10 from the low jack. 
I'm sorry, from the hijack. Recreational player calls me in position. Up a gut shot on ace check two rainbow. Big blinds in there as well. Table one well, uh, three handed on the flop. Ace five three two taunt will check back my king nine. Table four, I am gonna lead in between the two players with my gut shot. Table two is gonna check back my third pair. Table one, keep checking my king high. Interesting turn card. I don't think there's a ton of merit in turning this into bluffs against a wreck. I'd rather just let my 10 realize some of its equity via checks. Check to I'm not going to get him to fold an ace nearly often enough to justify barreling here. Let's shut down my king high. King high checks down. Good. Uh, over here, he goes bet, check, bet in the blind down blind. He does over bet the river. I mean, I've got good removal and that I block... That's a nine, some kind of two pair type hands. Block straights on King Jack. He's got so many bluffs here. Table one, go ahead and put in a small bet, 300 and ace jack three with bottom set. Table four, gonna check call the half pot bet with my pair. I think we're just gonna hero call here with the nine. Yeah, I like I like his play actually. I'm gonna overbet over here on table uh, table one. I'm actually gonna donk lead here with the four straight on table four against the wreck. Point with half pot could maybe have gone higher. Table four gonna open seven six suited from the uh, from the hijack. Table one opening pocket nines from the from the low jack. Got shown top pair, top pair middling kicker in that blind battle over there. Yeah, and the wreck had a six that he called me down with here on this hand on table four. He three bets me. I really often call it suited connectors, but given that he's been loose passive and he's half stacked, I think the move is going to be to get the hell out of the way with this particular hand. Table one, small blind recreational player calls, and then I get squeezed by the big blind. I think I can still call with pocket nines. Table three, opening jacks from the button. A short stack, presume recreational player on 30 blinds. Comes along. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a small bet on the king, king, king flop. He calls, turn is a 10. I think I wanna check back and then try to get value from an ace on the river in the bet check bet line. And he donk leaves into me. I'm really not giving him that much credit for pocket queens, <laughs> pocket pocket aces, or I guess he could have the, the case king, but he's going to have all kinds of bullshit. It's the, the bet on the king, jack, and seven board. I think I'll just go ahead and fold my pocket nines in that three bet pot. He checks the river. I'm going to go ahead and try to get value. He's got a pot size bet left. I'm sticking it in. I beat any kind of ace high, 10x, any pocket pair he can reasonably have. I'm really only worried about the case king, which I don't think is going to be in that check call, donk turn, check call river line very often. Let's ship it in. Table four, opening 10 8 suited from the cutoff. Oh, and he just actually reloaded. Maybe he's not a recreational player after all. Now, uh, this guy, he's playing full stack, but he squeezes from 2.5 to 5 with a wreck in the middle. I'm just going to go ahead and defend pretty much everything against that. Table 3, blind on blind. I have got queen 8. And open queen 8, blind on blind. Okay, before we go four-handed in that little weird janky squeeze size pot on a king jack three two-tone board. Checks through, turn is a five that completes the rainbow. Table three, I've got queens and eights on queen nine eight two-tone. Go ahead and put in a small bet on that board. No real equity of my hand over here on table four, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold against that bet. Lousy turn card for me, the nine, all his nine X, you know, nine X plus like pair plus draw type hands are now better than mine. My queen could be out-kicked pretty easily. 
In fact, my kicker doesn't even play because I've got queens and nines with the eight kicker, which is on the board. I think it's just going to be better played as a check. Let him stab something stupid. Rather than try to get value from a6, whatever. He goes and he bets, he bets the pot. I'd rather see a smaller bet, but I'm still calling here. And he's got 7-5 for the busted gut shot. So I think my river decision-making process was pretty good. Got Rex on the short stacks, about 25 blinds deep, that called me in position and from the big blind. I'll go ahead and check Ace King on the 9-5-3 two-tone board. Turn is a queen. I'm going to go ahead and stab for half pot now. I think I'm going to get the showdown better like this. Be checking the river to showdown, unless I hit, which I did. Now that there's an ace out there, he's got 1.5x pot left. I know it's really. I think what I want to do here is I really want to try to get as much value as I can from either a pair that doesn't believe me I spiked the ace or some other kind of middling ace that got there. I'm not going to get cute and bet and fold to a raise because I'm worried he made two pair or has two four or something like that. Just going to go ahead and try to let the wreck do what they do, which is pay off. New table three, I see a player open limping the button and a heads up pot playing any blinds deep. That makes me happy. Very likely wrecked. Strong indicia of recreational player there based on the stack size and the button open limp. I'm going to go ahead and stick around. Table one, going to open ace nine suited from under the gun. From the low jack, if you will. Okay, before first hand big blind with seven five suited, I'll check in after the wreck limps the button and the small blind completes. Get an ace six three rainbow board giving me a gut shot on that four. I'll go ahead and check, but looking to continue in some fashion. Don't hit the four, but hit the seven for what is now second pair. I think this is going to be a good hand to go out and bet to sort of fold out those overcards, H through Kings that have six live outs, but otherwise I, I really can't get any value from those and any possible run up, but they can take the pot away from me if I don't fold them out now. So I think my plan is going to be to go ahead and stab half pot on the turn here and then try to check the river down if I don't improve. Table one, a wreck limps. From what is the hijack from middle position, I will isolate from my button with queen nine suited. Rec limps the cutoff. I'll complete my small blind with four three suited on table three. And we get a rec with about six blinds left, calls the 4.5x open. I've got a gut shot and an overcard on jack eight four. I'm just going to make him put the rest in right now and give him a chance to fold. He's got jack five of hearts, but I'm live with the ten or the queen. I do hit the queen. Table one, wreck limps in the low jack. I isolate from the high jack with king ten suited.
Everyone else folds. The wreck limp calls. I get a 10-5-4 monotone board. I'll go ahead and stab small. He check calls. Reasonably clean turn. My plan here is going to be to bet half pot again to either charge or deny equity from single club hands and then check back rivers. He check calls again. Turn is the eight. Pretty clean run out. I think I just want to show this down now. And I'm against a set of 10s. Very interesting way to play pocket 10s. But uh, I think the way I played my hand is just fine. And I think trying to get greedy with the third river bet for value there is asking for trouble. You know, maybe it's a bit different if we still have top pair and he can't have hit some random jack that he called with on the flop because there was a single club in his hand. I, I don't think, you know, I like trying to value bet on the thin side, but I don't think that's a place to do it. This guy seems like he's limping about every hand. I was not going to go after him with King-4. with someone went after him before I had a chance to anyway. <laughs> We're going to keep an eye on him, because... If you're playing 100% of your hands and you're open limping all of them, your stack is not long for this world. I hate to break it to you. So I'm definitely going to be doing everything I can to make sure I'm the one that has every chance to get it before someone else does. For example, 6-4 suited is not a standard open from the cutoff by any stretch of the imagination, even for me. But when I've got this guy in the big blind, you better believe I'm getting in there. Because he's 80 blinds deep. If he was 30 blinds deep, it would be a different story. <laughs> Button calls, as does the recreational player. I flop a gut shot on Jack 7-3 rainbow. The rec leads into me for the minimum. I'm actually going to just treat that like a fancy check and still put in my bet. Table 4, blind on blind. I'll open pocket 10s. Now he leads for one. I'm not going to try to raise him again to keep it to. I'm going to keep his range wide in case I have to bluff the river like I will on most cards. Now he bets three. That little small size is usually weak blocker bullshit from these Rex types a lot. This is a weird line, so this may not work as often as it otherwise would, but I like to raise these small leads from recreational players. Sure not calling with six high, and I don't want to fold against that line that doesn't exactly scream strength. However, he was going nowhere with his 7-6. <laughs> Still like getting there, mixing up with these guys, giving them action. Getting in there again, opening king seven for middle position. Uh, button calls, the recreational player calls as well. I get an eight deuce deuce rainbow board. Table four, going to open threes from the cutoff. I'm going to check the king seven on eight deuce deuce table three. Recreational player calls me on the button. I'm going to go ahead and bet small on this king nine six two tone board and otherwise shutting down unless I hit that third three on the turn. Interesting uh, card over here. We get the three of hearts giving me a flush draw to go with my king high. The rec leads about 75%, 605 into 807. I am calling with my flush draw. Table four opening ace eight suited for middle position. There is the four of hearts giving me the flush against the rec over here on table four. I only lose to full houses or the ace high flush. He bets 14 into 19. I just got caught bluff raising him. If he has a deuce, he's never folding. 
you know, I occasionally will pay off a better flush or a full house, but I'm trying to get this guy stacked. I have a strong hand. We are shipping it all in. Table two up in ace eight from middle position. Table four putting in a small bet with ace eight suited and the king seven two rainbow. Table three opening ace two suited from middle position, under the gun rather. Table one opening king ten from middle position. Table one, a recreational player calls me. I get a 10-9-4 two-tone board. Gonna go ahead and stab half pot on that low board with my top pair second kicker. Table three, I get three bet in position from 2.5 to 9, and the rec calls. Um, I'd like to sneak in a lot against this rec, but this is probably a little bit too loose. I'll go ahead and fold that. Probably four bet bluffing less in that spot, just because it's not gonna get through. I think my wheel aces like ace five and ace four that would be four bet bluffs a good portion of the time will just become calls to take a flop against this guy. I'm just keep trying to show down my ace high over here. Table two, going to open queen eight suited from middle position. And the wreck makes two pair with his 10-7 to outdraw ace king's top pair top kicker. Queen eight hits trips against the cutoff player. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a small bet in here on the 884 rainbow board. Comes along for the call. Turn is a nine. My hand still seems awfully safe. Gonna go ahead and keep betting. Bet half pot here. Get a 2.5x open and the recreational cutoff player call on the small blind. Gonna go ahead and close the action from the big blind with 10 6 suited. Gonna ISO against these limpers out of the big blind over here with jack 9 suited and ace 10. Uh. Rec calls. I'm just going to go ahead and overbet all in for a little bit, a little more than 1.5x pot here on that Ace River. Hope he snagged an Ace and can pay me off. Keep barreling with my ace-10, open-ended draw over there now. I think I've got to keep bluffing with this. It's a slight overbet all-in, but I think that's going to be just fine. I do have a heart blocker in my hand. We're going to go ahead and ship the rest in against the wreck. Try to show down my second pair over here on table four. Open pocket eights from middle position on table two, flop top set. On the 8-6 deuce rainbow board, triple barrel bluff did not get through, didn't bluff the wreck over there. Bluffs are failing against the wrecks right now, and they're getting away from my value hands, but that's okay. Now this guy leads into me half pot. This is probably also a wreck because he's on the shorter side. I'm going to go ahead and give him a tag. No reason to raise him, at least at this stage. Just go ahead and call. Turn is the king of hearts, doesn't really change much of anything, neither pairs the board, completes a straight, or puts a fourth diamond out there. Still gonna feel like my set is pretty good here. He bets for half pot, I'll keep calling. Lousy river, that nine of, nine of diamonds, I now lose to any diamond hand. He checks, I'll take my showdown. I'm not trying to fold him off a diamond that donked twice and then checked. Probably not getting too much value from worse. I think it's King 10, so he actually had top pair on the turn to go with that 10 of diamonds. I really want to see on that river is a king.
Table one, open in pocket ten, from under the gun. Now, when I lost the wreck, he was my reason for living at this table, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of dodge, too. What a shame. He forever is up money on me. The called by Rex in position and out of position here on this Ace Jack 6 rainbow board. I'll check the pocket tens. My checks through quickly, turns the two of clubs. I'll keep checking the tens. River is a king, just keep checking, try to show this down. Not trying to get value, not trying to make worse, not trying to make better fold. Okay, before blind down blind, a wreck limps all raise up with a six suited. Get a jack nine five rainbow board. Go ahead and put in a small bet there. Turn is an eighth. I do have a gut shot to the seven, but the seven would make jack jack eight jack nine eight seven, meaning a ten is good for any possible straight. So I am not going to be bluffing on the six here. I'm going to check back the six and keep that pot smaller. Table one, get a two point five x open from under the gun. Recreational player in the cutoff calls. I'll squeeze from my ace blind with ace king. I think I'll go ahead and turn this weak ace into a bluff in the bet check bet line table four. Table two, I get a button call and then I squeeze from the big blind. I'll go ahead and fold my eight six.
Table four going to open king eight suited for middle position. Table four, recreational player limps the cutoff. I check my big blind with five deuce, get a king six three rainbow board. Do have a gut shot to the four. Uh, he bets three into two point three eight. I think I can call once looking for that four to try to punish him if I hit it. But other than that, I'm going to get out of the way. That size up on the flop tends to indicate strength. He bets five into eight. I'm going to go hit with my five high gut shot to the second nuts after that second bet. Okay, before we're going to open ace queen blind down blind have a recreational player playing 60 some blinds deep in the big blind be going at him very aggressively because he's still reasonably deep and he's been nothing but loose passive so far with three percent three but over the entire mm -hmm. session of 80 some hands New table three, 30 blind recreational player in the seat immediately to my right, so I like the looks of that. Everyone else looks reggy with roughly 100 blind stacks. Get a 2.5x open from that rec, blind on blind, table three, I will defend with jack eight. Table four against a rec, big blind, he checks to me, I'm going to go ahead and stab half pot with my ace eight on 762. Short stack guy bets 1.73 into 4.75. I'll call with jack 8 on queen 8 3 2 tone. Do have the jack of clubs, which now got very relevant with that third club, the king of clubs, showing up on the turn. Uh, I'm very content to check this back as all the cards that improve my hand either give me sort of a weakish, you know, a weakish or non nutish flush on the four flush boards, or I've got two pair of trips on a flush possible board. So I'm going to go ahead and check this back and keep that closer to showdown. River is the queen of clubs. Great card for me. I really only lose to full houses or the ace of clubs now. I think I'm just going to go ahead and stab at this. I like using that pot size bet as a default on these four straight and four flush runouts, rather than splitting size into big and small. Table four, opening ace eight suited from under the gun. I don't know if I can raise fold this against this guy. I'm not sure how to play against a 30 blind stack that's being so active. Just fold it. The ace four suited. Table one, recreational player limps blind on blind, about 27 blinds deep. I'll check in with king five and I'll stab the flop here now once he checks on the 4 3 3 rainbow. He check calls, turn is a 9. I'll check back and look to reopen the river, or value bet if I make a pair. Actually, I don't even know if I need to bluff this, because I really don't think I pulled out ace high or pairs very much. I think I'll take my showdown with king high on this low paired board. Ace 10 is probably not really folding. I think I save a bluff there in a spot where the bluff doesn't actually perform very well. The rare spot where the bluff does not perform very well.
Table three, opening queen nine suited under the gun. Table four, opening king ten from middle position. Looks like my table two is dying. I will, however, open ace king from the cutoff on the way out. Table four, recreational player calls in the cutoff. I'll go ahead and stab small on queen eight three rainbow with my king ten. I think I can check back ace king high on this low board here. I do have the wreck over there and two inner blinds deep. I'll keep keep him around for that. Check back nine five two two tone. Turn as a three, giving me a gut shot to the four straight, along with my ace king high and two over cards. He stabs about a third of pot, and we'll call with ace king high. River seven, all low board. I beat all those. Any combo of cards, 10 through ace here with the ace king. He could have hit various low pairs, but all his Broadway cards are going to lose. Looking to show this down or very likely bluff catch. Against the overbet, however, I will not be bluff catching against a loose passive player. This guy, in fact, is not actually a... Not a wreck at all. It was the tag from a previous player whose seat he filled up and doubled up on the first hand. In case the turn and river sizing combos didn't make it obvious. 2.5x open from the button on table 2. I am in the big blind with ace 7. I will be defending. I do have a 30 blind stack showing up here at that table. It should make the table worth sticking around at. In the queen nine five rainbow board, I'll go ahead and fold to the small bet with the ace seven high. Table one, open an ace king from middle position. Table four, wreck limp, small blind completes. So I'll check in with eight seven from the big blind. Check on the ten seven five two tone board. Get a two point five x button open on table two. I'll three bet my small blind with king queen. Keep checking on that ace turn on table four. I'm going to go ahead and put in a 4-bet with Ace-King against the cutoff 3-bet over here on Table 1. 4-betting Queens plus Ace-King to stack off. Mixing in some bluffs like Ace-Queen offsuit and some wheel aces. Table 1, opening Ace-Jack from under the gun. Table one, gonna open ten nine, blind on blind. Get called by the big blind, get a king eight three two tone board, can go ahead and put in a small bet. The ten nine eight three in a row to the straight, there's various turn cards that let me pick up equity. This active blind on blind, this active player about 27 blinds deep opens into me 3x blind on blind. I'm there with ace king, going to go ahead and 3 bet him and just planning to get this in. Of course. Table 1, my small bet gets raised, 10 high, only backdoor straight draws. I'll just go ahead and fold. Mm -hmm. 
He jams it all in. I'm happy to call with my ace king up against ace queen. A lot stronger than I expected him to be. And there is his queen on the turn. But however, I hit the 10 on the river to make the uh, Broadway straight on the four straight boards. So my hand is good and he is bust. Get a 2.5x open for middle position. Going to go ahead and fold my ace 7 in the blinds. Table 2, 2.5x open under the gun. I will 3-bet for middle position aggressively with my suited connector 7-6 suited. And table 2 will now open ace 7 suited under the gun. Rick calls me 20 blinds deep in position. Big blind comes along as well. I will check a7 on the king-queen-9 two-tone board without the relevant flush draw in my hand. Not a ton of merit in starting to stab this hand on the turn. Uh, had, had it been checked to me there for a second opportunity to bet. When he leads 551 into 7-6, just go ahead and fold. Table 4, opening 9-8 from the button. Sort of on the cusp, I think it's reasonable to open it. We do have... This guy hasn't been passive, but the other player's been a loose, passive, weak, reg type. 24-2 with 5% 3-bet over 50 hands. The ag more aggressive small blind, who's 3-bet some in the past. Well, it's only a second chance to do so. Go ahead and fold versus him, see 3-bets.
Table four, get a 2x cutoff open. I'm on the button with pocket sevens. I'll go ahead and three bet those. Table two, opening ace deuce suited for middle position. Table one, get a wreck limps the middle position. I'll isolate from the cutoff with pocket deuces. Flop is set on queen four deuce. Go ahead and put in a small bet against him. And to keep betting and getting this money in one way or another. No dice as he folds the flop. Table one, opening sixes from middle position. Table two, a min raise from a 30 blind wreck on the button. I'll defend with king 10 in the big blind and check the flop. And the ace, ace, jack, rainbow. Table four, going to open ace, jack from middle position. I just want to keep checking my king high as opposed to trying to fold a pair. Table one, get three bet in position by the button. I'll go ahead and defend the three bet with my pocket sixes and check the flop. Check call that half pot bet on table two with my king high and my gut shot. Check the river. Ace king for somehow does not find a value bet there in the check bet check line. <laughs> Get a small bet over there on table one. I think I can fold my sixes on that ace high board with no club in my hand on the two tone board. Table four. We are two. We are heads up. Six five four rainbow board. I will check back my ace jack splitting range and sizing up a bit on low boards like that. I think ace jack is probably going to play better in the check line. Really not folding out. Really not getting. Really not getting value for much in the way of worse hands. I guess maybe some ace seven, ace eight, ace three type stuff. But even those are not as far behind as you would think because they've got the straight draws. Really not folding out pairs too much. He stabs small, 1.5, 1. 1. 1. 1.6 into 5.2. I think I'll call my ace jack high there on that four straight once. River is the eight of diamonds that closes the flush as well. So we have a three flush, four straight board. And it's four straight to either the seven or the three at this point. I think I'll turn this into a bluff if he has the audacity to check to me. He does not. He bets 5.75 into 8.21. I will fold my ace jack high in that spot. Table 2, opening jacks from the cutoff. Table two opening nine eight suited under the gun.
Table two, cut off recreational player limps. I'll check my big blind with five deuce and check range on the flop. Mostly just be checking here on this king nine seven two tone board, queen of hearts in the turn, putting the double flush draw up there. Now that there's a four straight on that ten of hearts, I should go ahead and stab for pot with my five high. Try to fold him off. Better high cards or a pair. He's got the jack never folding there, of course, but certainly better than checking down five high in an uncontested pot. Table four, opening ace jack from middle position. Table 4, I've got a 2.5x open from under the gun. I will 3 bite out of my big blind with pocket jacks. Table 3, opening king jack from under the gun. He calls, get a queen, nine, deuce, two, t a rainbow board. Go ahead and put in a small bet with the jacks. Table three, get called by a recreational player. Get an eight, seven, seven, two, rainbow board. Go ahead and put in a small bet with my king, jack, high, and he insta folds. On table four, he calls the flop. Turn is an eighth. I'm going to go ahead and check my jacks here. I do have blocker to the straight, but I lose to lots of hands. He could have floated uh, the pre-flop and flop with, like, queens, nines, or even pocket eights. He goes ahead and stabs one-third pot. Go ahead and call with my pocket pair to second pair in the straight blocker. River is the queen. So the top pair is now paired, making it harder for him to have. He gives up. Did he give up pocket tens? I was really worried. I, didn't, I wasn't going to be able to call there. He had ace-king, and he didn't turn it into a bluff. I think if you're going to call ace-king and play it that way with that turn bet, you really need to follow through and blast off on the river. Hard for me to have ace-queen and king-queen in that particular line, especially with you blocking them somewhat. I think he needs to dust off on the river there. He put me in a really bad spot. I neglected to do so, though. Table three, opening king four suited from the button. Recreational player calls, get a jack, deuce, deuce, rainbow board. I'll go ahead and put in a small bet. And he insta folds, as he seems to like to do. He's playing 80 10 over the first two orbits, so he's got tons of auto folds on all sorts of boards, especially a board like jack, deuce, deuce, rainbow. Table 3, opening jack 10 for middle position.
Recreational player comes along. A small blind reg type calls out of the small blind as well. We get a 10-9-3 monotone board. I am going to go ahead and bet small here. Sandwiched between these two guys. Looking to fold out. All sorts of cards have equity. If they're over cards, a single spade, etc., etc. I think I have to go ahead and bet that flop. Turn, it kills my hand pretty badly. It's the fourth spade, the five of spades. I'm just going to go into shutdown mode and hope my ten checks down good here against some kind of stupid pocket parano spade. Now he goes and bets 3x pot on the river. I'm quite content to fold my jack-10 against a passive recreational player using a massive overbet. Table 4, blind on blind, I will open ace 3. Get a king 7 4, two tone board, go ahead and put in a small bet. It quickly folds. Table 3, 2.5x open from the button. I will 3-bet my big blind with ace-queen. He calls, goes to the flop, get a jack-8-3 rainbow board. Going to go ahead and put in a small bet. Tens, kings, aces, and queens, all pretty good cards for me. You let me either pick up a straight draw or a top pair. There's that ten. I now have a open ender, or a double gutter, I suppose is a better way to say it. Table 4, cutoff opens, I th or middle position opens, I 3-bet the cutoff with ace-jack suited. He checks to me on king, queen, deuce, two-tone. I've got the gut shot and the nut flush draw. I'll go ahead and put in a small bet. He calls. Turn is the 8 of clubs. I now have the nut flush. We'll just go about three quarters pot here and set up a river jam. We don't need to bet as big on the flush closing cards. Could maybe even go half pot. Table 1, blind on blind, facing a 3x open. I will defend with my ace 6 and go to the flop. Get an ace queen 3 rainbow board. He checks. 
I think I'll check back my weak ace. Not too much to charge, not too much to protect against. Under rep my hand to get some value on later streets. I think the check bet bet line is going to be better than the bet check bet line or the bet bet check line. It's really not a three street hand on too many runouts. I guess if I hit the six on the turn, I want to start chucking as much money as possible. Goes ahead and bets the turn small. I will flat with my weak ace. River is a five. Uh, ace, queen, three, four. Backdoor flush draw five. Putting four to the straight out there. I think I want to go ahead and actually try to get some finish value here with the weak ace. Hope I get a made for a busted flush draw or a busted Broadway gut shot. Do block any six, seven that could be out there, though I'm not terribly concerned about that in the line he took. Maybe could bet smaller to try to make it easier for a queen or like some random 5x whatever type of hand to call. Table three, opening queen ten from middle position. Super loose passive wreck calls again. He's in position on the button. Get a jack five deuce rainbow board. Going to go ahead and put a small bet on there and punish his wide range full of auto folds. Uh, doesn't get through this time, though. Turn is a deuce of clubs. I'm just going to check now. Had I picked up a straight draw, I could keep barreling. Here, I think this is going to be check fold territory. He bets three into just about ten. I'm going to call and look for my pair. River to ten of clubs, giving me a pair. And he bets six into fifteen. I'm calling again. He got ace four, busted gut shot. Table 4, 2.5x open from the cutoff. I'll 3-bet my button with pocket 8s. Get 4-bet. Four 4-bet, four you know, say on the small size for out of position. And call with my pocket pairs against that size for sure. And go to the flop. King 7 5 rainbow board. Because I can have 7s, 5s, I can have some King X type hands, I can have trap aces. He bets a little bit bigger, more like one third. Could go smaller on that. I think it's going to be okay to just. Let this one go and fold it. Get a 3x open from a recreational player on the button over here on table one. I'm going to 3-bet on my big blind with pocket aids. Calling would, of course, be okay as well, but I like to err on the side of 3-bet. Calls, get a king, queen, seven, rainbow board. Going to go ahead and put in a small bet. Thank you. 
Table four, opening king seven suited from middle position. Big blind comes along, get an eight, six, five, two-tone board. I've got the open ender and the backdoor flush draw. I'm going to go ahead and split my range size up and definitely bet this combo here for half pot. He check raises me. I'm going to call 7.8 into 18.3. So about 75% check raise. Easy continue with the open ender backdoor flush draw. Very interesting turn card that Jack of Spades giving me the backdoor flush draw to go with the very obvious open ender. The flush draw, of course, is far more stealthy. He continues betting. He bets 18 into 43 with all that equity and all the draw. I'm coming along for the call. River is the 10. Not the most ideal card for me as I was looking for a spade, a 9, a 4. Now he goes ahead and jams. King high is a very easy fold at that point. Table one, opening jacks under the gun. Table four, opening ace nine suited also under the gun. Table three, opening ace queen from middle position. And table one, get called in position and by a wreck in the small blind. I'm going to go ahead and check on the king nine five rainbow board. Flop checks through, turn is a seven, completing the rainbow. I'm going to go ahead and stab for half pot here. It can get called by various pair plus gut shots. <laughs> Not that worried about King when this guy checked back and this guy checked twice. And they both quickly fold. Surprised nobody had any piece of a board like that. But happens. Table three, my ace queen gets called in position by the uh, loose passive super rack. Gonna go ahead and put in a small bet on jack seven four rainbow. Turn is an eight. Just gonna go ahead and check to him now. Mostly check folding. He bets so small. I'm gonna call looking for my ace higher my pair. River is a ten. Putting the four straight up there. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this in the muck against another bet, which comes for half pot. Be happy to call with showdown value against a fish's half pot bet, but not ace queen high on a four straight. Mm -hmm. Table three, opening pocket three is under the gun. A king queen nine. Rainbow board. I'm just going to check the pocket threes to the recreational player here. Turn is the jack. Putting four straight out there. Going to keep checking. River is a six. Just keep checking. Hope I somehow beat some goofball ace high, which it looks like I do. Ace three. Ace three of clubs. Mm -hmm. Should probably find a bluff with that at some point. But... Quite content that he didn't, as I was not going to be hero calling with pocket threes against pretty much anything. Maybe some absurdly small bets. Table four, opening ace seven suited from middle position. Wreck limps, button small iso. I'll fold my ten seven suited of the big blind. Get a king six six rainbow board on table four. I'm gonna check the ace seven. I do have the backdoor flush draw here. I think you just want to check through once. I do block the ace six and seven six suited with my hand. Uh, against that small turn bet, just gonna go ahead and fold.
Table two, opening king six suited from middle position. Table one, opening king ten from the button with a dead small blind. Hold against the big blind three bet. Table two of the big blind three bets, my king six. I'll just go ahead and muck it. Table one, opening queens from the button. I think I'll go ahead and shut the session down here at this point, too. Games aren't that great. I've been playing for a while. I can always come back later. Table 4, opening ace 8. Blind on blind. Big blind comes along. Get a queen, 4, deuce, 2 tone board. We'll go ahead and put in a small bet. I'm checking pretty much every turn at that point, though. Table four, get a 3x open under the gun. I am in the button with pocket eights. Go ahead and put in a three bet. Table three, opening pocket eights under the gun. Loose passive fishy recreational player calls, as he does pretty much every hand. It called by the small blind as well. Dream flop for me. Ace, eight, three, two tone. Definitely going to be putting a bet in here. Start out with a small bet here on the flop. My boy has an ace. Going to get paid here. He calls. Turn is a deuce. I guess five, four got there, but everything else is nice and clean. Going to go ahead and over bet the turn. Oh, and he got away. I was not expecting that when I saw the flop, but that's the way it goes. Last hand on table one, 10 9 offs are the gun. Not going to play that, just going to go ahead and fold it. That's the end of the session for now. Until next time, this is Charlie Murphy signing off, and thank you for watching my video.